Hello guys, before we start this video, a large thank you to Keem, Ed Mead, Andrew Ridgway, Nicholas Andrews, Jared Dimeboard, and Adam Noons. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Oh, and if any of you guys were curious, I am more than just a pair of hands covering my face. If you'd like to check out my progress on my personal project Nephilim, or potentially see what my face looks like behind those hands, follow me on Instagram. Link in the description. Hello guys and welcome back to the next episode of Creating Dark Souls and Unity. Today we're going to make a state machine for our AI. So let's go to the enemy, create an empty game object. Let's call this enemy states. And under this we're going to create a several empty game objects. I'm going to call the first one idle state. And then I'm going to call it pursue target state. Um, we're going to do combat stand state uh, and attack state. So um, basically this is going to be a really clean way to allow us to add so many cool behaviors to our enemies and keep the scripts completely independent and nice and clean so the code is not cluttered and we don't have a giant update method that looks gross and intimidating. And uh, with this we'll, we'll be able to expand on it and it'll be modular and nice and it will just make everything run so much smoother. So let's go create a new script. I'm going to call this one state and this will be the base class for all of our different types of states. So let's open it up. It's actually going to be an abstract uh, class, which means you can't use it on its own. You have to use the things that derive from it. Um, so let's make that an abstract class and let's say public abstract uh, state. And then we're gonna say tick. So we want it to return a state basically, this, this functionality. And we're gonna say enemy manager. No, we're not because I didn't put my namespace. I committed a sin. Let's go up here and put our namespace and appease the namespace gods. Okay, there we go. Now I can use my code enemy manager. Uh, we're gonna want that. We're also going to want our enemy stats um, and we're gonna want our enemy animator handler uh, because we're messing with our stats and obviously our animations when we attack and move around and whatnot. Okay, so that looks good. Um, and since this is an abstract uh, method, you can't use this, you have to use something that calls it, derives from it. Um, let's make our first actual state now, we'll call this idle state. So this is gonna actually take the uh, the abstract class and method and make it usable. So let's go up here and put in our namespace, again, as is per tradition, minus SG for Sebastian Graves. You may use whatever you like. I am going to uh, make this derive from state. And now it's gonna give us an error, and that's because we need to actually um, call the function from our abstract class. So let's erase the start and the update method. Quick way to do this is to right click um, up here, quick actions, and we're gonna implement abstract class. So we're going to erase this in here because this is pointless and not necessary. And now it's gonna give us an error again, you're gonna see, because it needs us to return a state. Well, let's just return this to get the error out of the way. But we're not actually gonna code right now. I'm gonna walk you through the process of this. So we want this code to basically look for a potential target. And we already have the code for that. And we're gonna say switch to to pursue a uh, target state if we have a target. Uh, if not, we're gonna stay on this state. And don't worry, we're gonna reuse all the code we've already written. Um, so it's not it's not that was a waste of time. We're just gonna put the code in these scripts. So next we're gonna make the pursue target state. And uh, let's open that up here. Let's just get some, let's get some fake code thrown out so you guys can get an idea of what we're gonna do with this cool looking machine. So up here namespace as is per tradition and I'm going to make this pursue target state derive from our state. Going to implement the abstract class like before and uh, we're going to implement some pseudo code. So let's erase this. Okay, so this is a pursue target state. So what we're going to want to do is obviously we're going to want to chase the target. And we're going to want to like get within a certain range. So if we are within um, our our enemy's attacking range or within our attack range. We want to uh, get ready to attack the target, obviously. So let's switch to the combat stance state where you're ready to attack them. And if you're not, well, we're gonna return this state and we're gonna keep chasing them. So that's straightforward. Okay, so let's now um, make the combat stance state as well. I'm just gonna drag these back here and put them in the proper order. Cause I'm gonna go over them again when I got them all done to give you one final explanation. So uh, let's create combat stance state. I'm trying to make this as simple and as straightforward as possible so you guys get it. So we're breaking it down into tinier pieces uh, so it's clean and nice and easy to look at in its individual parts. So up here, let's erase the start and update again. I'm not gonna say what well, you gotta do. You're gonna know that by now. Put this up here and then uh, you know make it inherit that abstract class and throw in the functionality. So the combat stand state, we're gonna, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna check um, to make sure within, we're within range again. 
So check for attack range. And uh, we're going to want to potentially circle the player or walk around. You know, just give us a bit more life. Like I should, some of you guys might see the gifts I put in the Discord. So we're going to want to circle the enemy or walk around them until ready to attack. And if we are ready to attack, let's switch to the attack state. And uh, let's go from there. And if not, we're going to continue to walk around or circle the player. So now let's make our last state, the attack state. And you guys can make whatever states you want to make after these uh, videos are done. You can add like, you know, um, sleeping states or like trap states, etc., etc. So let's make the attack state do the exact same thing. And let's throw down some pseudo code. There is a lot of knowledge in this video and not just um, mindless typing, which is why I'm explaining it all out to you guys. Because I want you guys to know how a state machine can work because it's really awesome and it can make everything in your project so modular. So let's erase that and we're going to say... If we are with, actually we're going to say, select one of our many attacks. So we're going to have a pool of attacks and we're going to select that based on attack score. It's going to pick an attack randomly based on their distance and angle and the score. Um, and if the selected attack, do you know, I can't type. If the selected attack is not able to be used because of bad angle or distance, Select a new attack. If the attack is viable, then let's attack the target. Oh, let's stop our movement and attack the target. Then we're going to set our recovery timer to whatever the uh, attack's recovery timer was, meaning we can't attack until that timer goes back to zero. And then we're going to return our combat stand state again. Because after we attack, I'm going to go back to the combat stance. And I'm just going to hit return this so we don't get an error. Okay, so let's go over this more time. Because I'm going to make a couple of small adjustments. Whoops. Okay, so we got the out of state. So let's look for a target. Have we got one? Cool. Let's pursue the target and switch to the state. So if we don't have a target, then return this and continue looking for a target. So in the pursue target state, cool. If we have a target, let's chase it. If we're in the attack range, let's return the combat stand state. If the target is out of range, return the state and keep chasing the target. Very straightforward. And now on the combat stand state, check for attack range, potentially circle the player walk around them. If we're in attack range, cool, switch to the attack state. If for some reason the player dips and runs away, so we're gonna say, or if we're in a cooldown too, um, after the attack state, we can return this and keep circling the player. And if the player dips and runs away, we want to return the pursue target state. So if the player runs out of range, return pursue target state. So you can see how this is going to work now. They circle back into each other. And that's awesome because we can put all the code we want in each individual script. And you know how the attack script or the attack state goes. So if we're within range, let's attack them, sort the attack out, and then return back to the combat stand state. So cool. Now let's open our enemy manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these enemy attack actions because we're not going to use this on the script anymore. It's going to be in our attack state script. So you can copy and paste them in the attack state script. I'm going to do that in the next video right now. I'm just going to delete them. And now we're actually going to comment out all of the code in attack target and get new attack. We're not going to delete it because we're going to reuse it again in the other scripts. So for now, I'm just literally going to comment all of it out and I'm going to minimize it and hide it. I told you guys in the last video that um, it wasn't staying here, it wasn't permanent, but it's not a waste. We wrote it out for a purpose. I wanted to get the rough functionality down to make sure it works, and we're going to reuse each line of code in these functions just in different scripts, and we're gonna implement them more modularly. Okay, so I'm actually gonna fast forward this now, and I'll be back right back when all this is being done, commented out. I know some of you are thinking out loud, screaming at me, Sebastian, you can use the asterisk slash and comment it all out at one time. Why are you doing this? Please d don't comment it. I know. I, I didn't think about it until it was done. Okay, it was a mistake. Okay, so under handle current actions, delete all this. This is no longer uh, going to be utilized. It's junk. And now we're actually going to change this functionality into a state machine, and it's so easy. Some people are intimidated by these things, but I'm gonna make a very, very clean, very simple state machine. So first up here, let's come here and say, public state, current state. So let's be a way to track what state we're currently in. 
I'm going to say if current state does not equal null, so we're going to drop a current state on this before we start. Um, we're going to say state next state is equal to current state dot tick. Because remember on our uh, state abstract, we made a function called tick. And we're going to say this, and we're going to pass enemy stats, which we don't have yet, but we're going to call that. And we're going to pass our enemy animator, or animation ma manager. Or, yeah, animation manager. Okay, so um, that is going to fire the functionality in the state. And you're gonna see how this is going to work, and it is so nice. Enemy stats, let's call it up here, make a variable for that and call it on awake. Cool, lovely. Right down here, and I think that's get component because it's on the same game object as the enemy manager, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, cool. Now, let's go back down here. We gotta do one more thing, a very tiny thing. We're actually get started. Let's uh, make a function. First, we're going to say if next state does not equal null, we're going to say switch to next state. And we're going to pass next state. And now let's make a function right under this called switch to next state. I put this down here. Get out of the way. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. I have to do this there. Okay. So private. Void, switch to next state. Pass the state, there we go. And we're going to say current state equals state. So all this is doing now, we're gonna run this on the update or on the fixed update rather, whichever you prefer. Um, I'm actually gonna change the name of that. We're gonna change that function name to handle state machine. Um, but it's basically going to run the functionality in the state that is selected. So we'll start from the idle state, which is going to continually look for a target. And if it does that and finds a target, it's going to switch to the pursue target state. And then it will continually run the code on that, which will make the enemy follow the player until they're within attacking range. And then it will switch uh, to the next state and so on and so on. So let's copy your handle detection method from the play enemy locomotion manager and just delete it completely, and we're going to copy and paste it right in the idle state. Um, whoops, not the, not exactly the full thing, just the, just the functionality within the function. My bad. So let's, from the, the collider and the for statement, let's copy that, and let's just delete the rest of it. So this is the idle state, and what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, enemy manager dot current target. We want, let's move that current target to the manager. That was on enemy locomotion manager before, so... Uh, public character stats, current target. Let's move that to the enemy manager script. Keep it all in one place. You're gonna get some errors. All you gotta do is uh, double click them here. And we're gonna just say enemy dot manage or enemy manager. Uh, and a lot of these errors won't matter because the logic will be moved in the next video to the state scripts. So, but just do it now to get rid of them if you'd like. So I'm just gonna copy this, double click this, paste it there and paste it there. You can see this is in handle move to target, which will be moved to the pursue target script in the future. And I paste it there and paste it there. So it doesn't matter, but we're going to do it right now anyway, regardless. So anyway, back to the idle state script. This is going to essentially um, find a target. And if it doesn't find a target, it's just going to keep looking for a target. And when it does find a target, we're going to make it switch to the pursue target script. Let's copy that layer mask for detection layer. And let's paste that in here as well. Cool. So let's come out here and make slight modification to this, not anything drastic at all. What we wanna do is basically um, make this switch to the pursue target state if we have a target. So let's create a public pursue target state variable and call it pursue target state. We can just drag that in from the inspector. Or you can use an awake method and say uh, get component in children or whatever, whichever you prefer. Um, now I'm going to say return pursue target state. Actually, I'll put that right there. Let's make it cleaner. Um, let's come out of here. Or this is return this. Let's erase that. And let's say if enemy manager dot current target, whoops, current target, not current state, is not equal null. So if we have a target, let's switch to the pursue target state. And if we don't, let's keep on this state. So there we go, nice and straightforward. So the code above, as you've seen in a couple of videos ago, um, it looks for a target, very straightforward. 
So I'm just going to put down up here, make a region so it's nice and clean. Um, handle enemy target detection and region. Okay, it's going to look for a target. And then out here we're going to say handle switch state. Handle switching to next state. And region. Now, I'm sure a lot of you gets this. I'm sure a lot of you will get this now. You can see what I'm going for. So let's save that. Now let's go down here into the inspector. Now let's go to our states and on the idle state, add component. Idle state. Detection layer will be character like before. Let's go to the pursue target state, add component, pursue target. Combat stand state, combat stand state. And attack state will be attack state. Awesome, you guys could do this with scriptable objects. I just like doing it this way, personal preference. It's really no big deal. So let's go to our enemy and we're gonna wanna drag in our idle state on our current state because that will be your starting state. And basically, every time you're in a state, it's gonna run the logic over and over again and switch when it's applicable. So I've only set up the idle state right now, but let's drag in the pursue target state. It has no logic, but it will switch to it. So just for the sake of this video so I can show you, watch this, we'll start it up. And you can see it's on the idle state, but if you walk, in front of the enemy, it switches to the pursue target state after it found us. Now, if we had our logic moved over or we handled our movement, this guy would now chase us. And then if we had it so once he got within a certain range, it switched to the combat stand state, he can then attack us and et cetera, and et cetera. We're gonna finish this up uh, in the next video, maybe possibly two more because we could expand on it with some new states, but in the next one for sure, we'll get down to chasing the player and attack him again. But you can see how this is so much more nicer and modular and you can add to it and there's no fear of it getting too messy because now it just cleanly switches between different scripts. And you can even get really creative and add events in between states so you can make other things happen. Uh, I hope this was straightforward and I hope you guys understand it. I'm gonna go over it again very clearly in the end of the next video when it's all complete and all the pieces are there in front of you. I know it's hard to understand some things sometimes when you're not looking at the whole picture, but I'm sure with that example I gave from switching to the idle state to the pursue target state, you have a good idea of what's going on. And as usual guys, if this video helped you out and you liked it, please drop a like so I can continue to keep this series up on YouTube and keep the great videos coming for you guys. If you're feeling like a total champion, appease the YouTube algorithm gods by leaving me a like, say something cool, say something nice, say whatever you want. And if you're feeling really kind and generous, please check out my Patreon below. I genuinely appreciate it. And as always, guys, thank you for checking me out. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya!